Now let's look at adding some devices to be controlled by the BC4. So we'll go to our BC4 in the project tree and expand that. Then go down to our BCX1 module, which contains all of the hardware interfaces like the relays, the IR ports, the serial port, and so on. We'll expand that. And let's go down to the IR devices section and add a new device. So we'll right click IR devices, click add a new IR device. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be controlling uh, a Denon AV receiver that I happen to have on my test bench. So I'll add the name and choose which IR port this device is connected to. And then I'll go ahead and start browsing through my IR library, which is built right into the BC4. So I will select AV receiver. And I'm going to look for my manufacturer. As you can see, there's a lot of different manufacturers here. So I'll choose Denon and then we've got a couple of code sets to choose from. Let's test the first one out. When you choose a code set, it populates this window uh, full of IR commands that are associated with that device. You can double click any one of these commands and test the device. And I see that's working properly. Uh, maybe test a couple of other ones. Yes, that's controlling things as I expect it to. This IR code set is pretty complete and has everything that I need. But if there was a device that was maybe missing a couple of commands or I wanted to add a new command that wasn't there, I could just go ahead and go up here and add a new IR command. Let's call this one test. And add it to our list of learned commands. I'll go ahead and click learn. And it tells me that it's ready. I point the factory remote at the learner that's built into the BC4. And I learned that successfully. Now, in addition to learning with the built-in IR learner, on these IR commands, you also have the ability to uh, import a command that's formatted in pronto hex, which can be useful because there's a lot of IR codes floating around out on the internet that use that format. So once you've created your device, added all the factory commands, and added any learn commands that you may need, click OK. Now if we open up our IR devices tree, we see that there's our device, and there's all of those commands, which we can then use later to drag into our macros. Now another useful feature is if you're an installer and you use a lot of the same components in job after job, once you've created one of these devices, you don't want to have to go through the work every single time of creating that device over and over again. You can go to one of your devices and click export. This will give you the option to uh, export that device as a file which later down the road can be imported over and over again. There's the device I just exported. And job after job you can use those devices time and again. So once you created it once you're done. You never have to do it again. That can save a lot of time on installations. Now let's look at creating a serial device. So while we're still in the BCX1 module, we'll right click on the serial devices portion of the project tree and click add a new serial device. Now this kind of device could be just about anything like a matrix switch or an AV receiver, anything that's controlled with RS-232. Um, so let's uh, just call this a matrix switch. and in this case, the BCX1 module only has one serial port, so that's already selected for us. And over here will be a list of all our commands, and here's where we'll go about actually adding and editing these commands. Now, there are a couple of different command types which we can use, um, one of which would just be a simple ASCII string, which is, you know, whatever you type is what's going to get uh, sent out that serial port. The next one would be uh, a hex string, which would just be a series of hex bytes, and every pair of characters would be treated as a hex byte. Like there's a hex 0, there's a hex 1, uh, there's a hex 2, and so on and so forth. You can define your entire serial string that way. And another common uh, command type would be an ASCII string with a hex terminator. In this case, you know, it might be a command as simple as power on with a carriage return on the end of it. And 
Let's go ahead and just name that and add that to our list. We can double click one of these commands to test it uh, or go back and edit it, make any changes and save it back to the list of commands. Once we're done setting up all of our commands, go ahead and click done and that device will now appear in our list of serial devices. And again, just like the IR devices, uh, we can export and then import devices for use in later projects. In addition to setting up the serial device itself, we also need to configure the serial port that it will be connected to. So let's go up to the serial port in our project tree, right click it, and go to properties. Now there's a number of modes of operation. Uh, in this case we're going to operate in normal mode, and these other modes we'll talk about in some future tutorials. So we'll go into normal mode and we're going to select the baud rate um, that this device communicates on. And we can click the apply button to actually make those changes live on the BC4. And click OK.